Oh, hi there. Welcome to another episode of the Okanagan Gardener and Forager channel. Today I'm going to talk to you about juniper plants, juniper trees, juniper bushes, all of the above. These plants have a long history of edible and medicinal uses and dating back hundreds, thousands of years maybe. And I'm also going to tell you about three different plants that can be found in this area. So it's going to be a lot. I'm going to try to hit the high points and get ready because here we go. What you can see behind me is a Rocky Mountain Juniper. Today I'm going to be talking about the three species of juniper that can be found in this area. Rocky Mountain, Creeping, and Common Juniper. What else? I'm going to, I'm going to describe a few traits that you can use to identify them. And also what I'm going to be talking about are some edible and medicinal uses that are common to those three. Now, there are a whole bunch of other species of juniper that can be found throughout North America and beyond. One of the ones that I'll talk about today, common juniper, is found across North America and in Europe. But the traits that I'm speaking about will be the ones related to these three. So just as a word of warning, I suppose, be careful and be sure you know what juniper it is that you're dealing with, wherever you may be. The first juniper that I'll be describing today is Rocky Mountain Juniper, Juniperus scopulorum. It's a tree juniper, so the other two will be uh, more like shrubs. And it's closely related to Eastern Red Cedar or Juniperus virginiana. And uh, they can be distinguished in a couple ways. One, where they grow. You can find Rocky Mountain Juniper in, the West, in Western North America. In Canada, they find them from BC to Saskatchewan. Uh, and another way is the berries, which here are some of the berries. They're actually modified cones, but Rocky Mountain Juniper, they take a couple years to reach maturity, whereas the Eastern Red Cedar, Juniperus virginiana, uh, as I understand it, can they reach maturity in a year. The leaves are scale-like. They have four rows of scale-like leaves. And also, another way... Oh, let's get in here. Another way to tell... They have bark, which is reddish brown bark, and it's shredding. It can come can come off, peel off in strips. The second juniper that you can find in this area is common juniper, Juniperus communis. And this one is a low-growing shrub with needle-like leaves. They look sharp, and they are sharp. And actually, well, this one. It's a shrub, so it doesn't get very tall. This one's just a little guy, but they don't get very much, they don't grow very high off the ground at all. And they grow berries, just like the others. I saw a couple on here. You can find them in different stages of growth on the same plant. Those ones are not ripe. And this one, one that is ripe. And Common juniper is the only circumpolar conifer of the northern hemisphere that uh, can be found throughout. It's circumpolar, so you can find it throughout North America and Europe in diverse habitats in both on both continents. The third juniper you can find in the area is creeping juniper, Juniperus horizontalis. They look very much like Rocky Mountain juniper in a lot of ways. The leaves are scale-like. Four rows of scale-like leaves, similar to Rocky Mountain Juniper, uh, but their growth habit is different. They grow as a shrub, low to the ground, maybe only up to like 25 centimeters or a foot off the ground. And they produce cones, like the others, which are the berries, so-called berries. And on the same plant, you can find unripe ones as ripe ones. And... I only saw a couple of ripe ones. See if I can find them. Where did they go? There. There's some of the ripe berries or cones. And the bark is reddish brown and shredding. You can see it peels off easily. 
Now that I've told you how to identify or at least what three types of junipers are that you can find in this area, I'll give you a warning about them. Prolonged or heavy use of juniper can irritate the digestive tract and the kidneys. And also, pregnant women or people with kidney problems should not use juniper. And if you're going to eat the berries, I would say that you should only have maybe two or three at a time because it can give you an upset stomach. Juniper berries have some edible uses. Some indigenous people in the area considered them inedible, while others did eat them in small amounts like in times of famine, just eating a few because they thought it would help to, to suppress appetite. They are also probably most famously known for the flavoring that they give to gin. And, um, they're also used quite a bit as a seasoning or like a spice with cooking meat and also with soups and stews. And they, they can be used whole or ground up, like say in a pepper mill grinding them up. And then what else they could be used for, they can help to relieve or prevent flatulence. So say a dish that you might know to cause gas, you could add it to them and it can help to prevent that gas. And if you are going to eat them, then I think I already said it, but I'll say it again. Maybe just have two or three of them uh, because too many can cause an upset stomach. What you're looking at here is the Rocky Mountain Juniper and I wanted to make sure I showed some ripe berries because most of these are not ripe. But this one here is a ripe one and I managed to collect a few others. I assume most of the others maybe maybe they just haven't ripened yet or a lot of them already been eaten or fallen off. Anyway, juniper has a whole bunch of medicinal uses. I could go on and on for a long time, but I'm just going to uh, you know, hit a few that I think are the most interesting or they are also ones that are common to these three that I've shown today. So juniper berry is diuretic and it promotes extra urination. So that can help clear the bladder, prostate, gallbladder, and kidneys of excess waste. The berries are also anti-inflammatory. So they can be used to relieve pain from rheumatic conditions, painful joints, arthritis, sore muscles, and more. They can also be used, or well, they can be taken internally, like you can have it make them into a tea, or they can be used uh, to make a cream or a salve, or you could put the berries in a bath and soak with them that way to help relieve some of the pain. Juniper is considered a purifier of the blood and also has antimicrobial actions. So it's been used to treat fungus on the skin and some indigenous groups use the branches to cleanse a home and protect it from evil or from harmful spirits. Something that I think was uh, fairly interesting was that in the 14th century, some doctors, they would grab a few, or not grab, but they would take a few uh, juniper berries and they would hold them in their mouth when they were dealing with like the black plague. And just hold them in there to hopefully prevent infection. So those are uh, some of the things that I think are most interesting about juniper. And uh, if you like the video, then please give it a thumbs up and let me know in the comments what did i miss is there something else that uh, i should have described about juniper and uh, if you leave a comment then you can let everybody else know anyway thanks for watching